Hey everyone, and welcome to another edition of Can You Hack It? I am your host, Ben, and this video is actually just going to be a quick demonstration of a topic that I posted on my blog, which is using ICMP to exfiltrate data from a network. Um, so basically what I'm going to show you real quick is the code that I've shared on the blog and how it works. So if we just pull up this terminal here, and so what we have here is we've got one window in Tmux or one of the panes is connected to a remote system, just an Ubuntu system, and the other one is here on our local Kali VM. And so what we're going to do is get data from this remote system to our Kali VM, ignoring the fact that we have SSH right now. As I pointed out in the um, blog post, this is more useful in cases where you have some sort of blind command injection where you're able to execute commands, but you're not able to get the results back. And the box is locked down enough that you can't simply get a reverse shell by using one of the many techniques that you can find on sites like Pentest Monkey. So assuming that that was the case, how would we get the data off of the system? One way to do it is ICMP, which is what I'm going to show here. Uh, just for future reference, I think I'm going to start trying to do more of these small, quick videos on specific topics. I'll probably try and come up with some new... Um, look for the videos so that they can be distinguished from the normal um, Hack the Box videos or Can You Hack It series where I'm doing more of like a CTF style complete walkthrough on some retired system. Anyway, let's take a look real quick. I'm not going to actually go through writing the code in this video. I have recorded another one already where I do go through it. I haven't decided if I'm going to post it yet or not because I don't really know that it's super helpful versus just reading on the blog. But if we cat xfill.sh, this is on our um, remote system, this is the script that we're going to use to exfiltrate data through the tip, the standard Linux pin command. On the blog, I actually also show a um, single liner that we would be able to use to do the same thing. In fact, let's see, I think I can probably just copy it real quick and paste it. So it looks like this, where we've taken basically all of this stuff and we've condensed it into a single line so that we would be able to execute it through some sort of command injection. This particular one's catting the output of IDRSA, which actually I don't know if this system has um, SSH authentication set up yet or not. And it's using the ping command to exfiltrate it. But we'll work with this script since it's a little bit easier to read. So basically what we're doing here, you can ignore the echo line, but what the echo line's doing is it's just echoing out all of our command parameters. So if we had like ls space dash la, you would see ls space dash la because we're grabbing from the second um, argument to the, that's sent to the script onward. So we're not printing out the destination because in this case, it's not part of the command. We're doing a quick check to make sure that um, parameter one and two aren't empty. If they are, we, ex or we print out how to use it and we exit. Then we're setting the destination to the first argument. We're setting the command to the second and all subsequent arguments. We're executing the command. We're piping it to XXD. The dash P makes it just output the, um, the hex bytes. It doesn't output the ASCII format, doesn't output the line numbers, doesn't do any of the formatting. Dash C16 tells it to do um, 16 byte columns. And so basically what we end up with is I'll show you real quick. We do lsla, pipe that to xxd-p-c16. You end up with something that looks like this. And so this is basically the output of ls-la in hex format um, in columns with a width of 16. Don't get this confused with base64 encoding, which is another thing that we could have done instead. This is actually just the raw, um, the raw bits or bytes. And so then what we do is we save the original um, interfield separator and then we set it to one that's going to work with this output. And then we run through uh, each line of the output. So each one of these lines, if they're 32 characters long, then we just set the payload equal to them. If they're not 32 characters long like this last one, we end up creating a... Um, pad string and the pad string is basically just uh, 32 minus the number of characters that are already here. So if it was 16, the result would be 16 and it just prints 16 zeros. And so then we concatenate the row, which is this part, 
with the pad, which is just zeros, and so we basically pad the right side of this with zeros. Since it's a string, um, or since we handle it as a string later on, those zeros are just ignored. That could potentially cause problems um, if we were to try and transfer binary files or something, so you would want to probably be a little more creative, like embed the length of the payload, and you know, there's a lot of different things you could do here. And then finally, we run the ping command. We only send a single ping. We set p to our payload, and so ping dash p. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's do man ping, man ping. So if we look here real quick, um, dash p is a pattern, and so it basically allows us to send 16 bytes that it'll use to pad out the packet. Those bytes are repeated over and over and over again. So that's all you really need to know about the script. Afterwards, we set the interfield separator back to the original value, and that's that. And so now on the other side, sorry, on the other side here, we have a Python script that we run. It's just called listener.py. Again, it's really basic. You know, I just wanted to write something quick, not complicated, that can show how this works. So this basically just creates a raw socket, listening only to ICMP, does receives receive up to 1600 bytes since our MTU's uh, 15 it shouldn't you know it should just receive whatever size packet SRC ends up being the address information for whoever sent the packet data is the actual packet minus the header since we're not setting the socket option to get the header um, and then what we're doing is we're grabbing bytes 44 through 60 so we're grabbing the 16 bytes um, that we happen to know contains this payload and we figured that out by looking at Wireshark or you could print the output. I think this is actually the second copy of the data because the data gets repeated to pad out the um, packet. And then we're just writing it to standard out. The reason we're using sys standard out write instead of print is because print would throw um, new line characters in where we don't want them. We want the original new lines to be the only new lines that are in there because they are the original new lines are in here. And so basically then if we run this Python listener.py. It's going to be listening now for ICMPs. So on this side, oops, sorry. On this side, if we run our script, so we do xfill, and then we set it to um, our local host, which is 185, and we do something like ls. You can see that it sent the ping there. We can see that we got xfill.sh is the only thing, which is the only thing in this directory. We could do ls-la. We get the actual lsla output, so lsla. Total 12, we got these three lines. Um, we cat, sorry, I keep forgetting to do it in there. We can cat xfill.sh, actually cat the output of it. And so basically, if we had, let me see real quick if I do have one, um, ls, .ss, or not ls, sorry, cat, .ssh, no, I don't. Okay, so if I did, um, let's just create one real quick. Keygen, we'll save it in the default spot, we won't give it a passphrase. By the way, if you see it in here, this isn't an actual key, obviously, so I'm not really worried about leaking the um, private key out. So now we should have IDRXA. We do. So let's see, I haven't actually tried this, but it should work. So there we were able to leak the private key, which we would then be able to take and use to log into the system. And so that's really all there is to it. Hopefully this helped clarify anything that you didn't understand in the um, blog post. But basically it's just using the data section of an ICMP packet, which isn't normally used for anything to sneak out information and in the case of the default Linux pin command that limits us to 16 bytes at a time. Luckily we can just send ping packet after ping packet with each of the 16 bytes until we've sent the entire payload over. And for smaller stuff like this it's quick enough that um, it doesn't feel clumsy. Feel free to expand on this or you know, do other stuff. I may try and um, 
write up more later, like maybe how to do like a client server for doing kind of a C2 style um, command and control over ICMP. Maybe we'll throw in some stuff like encryption for the payload and other things that will make it a little bit harder to notice. Obviously, to do something like that, we need to have permissions on the target system to create ICMP packets, which there's a number of ways we could get those. Most of the time, I would think it's probably not very likely that that would work um, without us already having some sort of privileges, at which point you would ask, why won't we just uh, change the IP tables rules to allow us to get back with whatever. But um, anyway, we'll see if I ever get around to doing that. Hope you enjoyed the video and feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try and make more smaller videos like this and more um, blog posts on more generalized topics, probably taper off a little bit on the hack the box videos just because of the amount of time that it takes to actually do the box and then prepare to make a video on the box and then make the video and edit the video. And, I just don't have the time for that right now, so instead of just disappearing, I figure I'll start doing stuff that's a little bit quicker that I can bang out really fast like this video, and we'll see how that goes. Hope you have a good day or evening or whatever it is, and I'll see you on the next one.